Okay, so this is a quadratic word problem, and it's called a projectile. You probably saw them in Math 1. Um, and it says a ball is thrown into the air with an initial upward velocity of 48 feet per second. Its height, h, in feet after t seconds is given by the function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 48 t plus 4. Now, um, this little part, which is like h of t, that represents the y value in a sense. Uh, but you can let functions be anything. So we're letting it be h of t. This little negative 16, it will always be negative if you're throwing a projectile because when you throw something, it's going to look like this. That's, that's the path that it's going to take. So that negative 16 is basically the acceleration due to gravity if something is in feet, and this one is in feet. If it was in meters, that would be negative 4.9. Then this little part right here, so usually when you're seeing these kind of questions, you have 16 t squared, and then the 48 is the velocity, so the velocity is always written there, and then the 4 is the initial height. That's the height where it starts. So this ball actually starts at 4 feet, okay? So if you ever had to like fill in the little numbers that go with it, that's kind of how it goes. So we're going to look at this one first. And because we'll come back to this one because it kind of messes things up on the screen for Desmos. So it says, in how many seconds will the ball reach its maximum height? Well, this is the path. And you can move it around too. I just kind of moved it there. But you can also move it up and down if you'd like. So you can see the whole thing. That's probably better. So here's the maximum height. And the question says, how long does it take it to reach... How many seconds? So the x values, and when I plug it into the um, Desmos, I do have to take the t's and make them in the x's. So the x's are actually equal to the time. So we're looking across the bottom. So when we look at that point, that point is 1.540. So this is my x and this is my y. So this is my time. And this is my height. Okay, so when I look at that point, I can immediately see that it takes 1.5 seconds. And it also is very important when you're doing word problems in order to write what you're talking about because it's a little different than just doing a problem. So it's 1.5 seconds. And then the maximum height is going to be 40 feet. And you might need to look back at the problem to make sure that you have the right unit. Now, the other question that a lot of times that you'll see is, when does it hit the ground? And that'll be something that you see sometimes. When does the ball hit the ground? Well, when you're looking at the picture, that would be when the height is equal to zero. So the height is equal to zero when it hits the x-axis. Now, we can see that it hits the x-axis twice. It hits here and it also hits here. But we cannot have negative time, so that negative 0 0.081 doesn't make any sense. That's not even the path of the ball because the ball actually starts right here and goes this way. So that part of the parabola doesn't really do the, 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 what is it, the path of the ball. So we're going to be looking right here and so when it goes up and it comes back down, it hits the ground here. So it takes it three, and usually we write these, we round to tenths. I usually have you round things to tenths. So that would be 10.1, and that would be seconds. That's how long it would hit, take it to hit the ground. Now, the first question says, what height will the ball be when two seconds has passed? So... At 2 seconds, this is my 2, so I could look on my graph, and I could scoot back and forth. Let's see how good I am. I could scoot back and forth, Ooh. and I could see when this is 2. So I'm getting pretty close, but there's also a better way. Uh, 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 it's right, uh, uh, uh. there it is, ah, uh, did you see it? 236. Okay, so how high is it? Uh, how high will the ball be when two seconds have passed? It would be 36 
feet. Now, there's a better 36 feet. There's a better way to do it, and it's to look at the table. And so it's really, really quick if you look at the table. So you click in here and see where it says 2, 236. So you could put any number in here. Like if you wanted to put 1.25, at 1.25 it's 39, which makes sense because it's like right before it gets to the maximum height. If you wanted to find out like a half, you get on here and put point, at 0.5 seconds, it's at 24 feet. And it also shows you where it is on the graph. Okay, so that's when you have projectiles, and you definitely need to use your calculator for the projectile problems. Um, for the next one, it's also a quadratic problem, although I went a little too fast, too far. So we're going to scoot back. Here we go. So our other uh, quadratic word problem, it says the equation y equals x squared minus 12x plus 45 models the number of books y, so that's my y, sold in a bookstore x days, so this is this represents the days, so um, x represents the days, and y re represents books, number of books sold. Because it's always good when you're looking at the question to kind of like rewrite what the x and the y stand for because it makes more sense. So it's the um, the number of books sold book number sold in a bookstore X days after an award winning author appeared at an autograph signing reception. What was the first day that at least a hundred copies of the book were sold? So if you look over here at the picture, um, if we look at the the um, the graph of it. We'll move it over. So, it started at 45. You can kind of tell. That was my starting value. So, after zero days, it started at 45. And I kind of feel like this equation is kind of weird because after the award-winning author came, the sales actually went down right after they came. So, this was at day zero and so after they came you can kind of like go down after one day like so that it went down and then I guess maybe they got more famous so basically what it says what's the first day that at least a hundred copies of the book were sold so you'd go up here where you got a hundred copies and so it looks like after day 15 so it's like day 15 and a half. So what was the first day that at least 100 copies were, were sold? That would be probably on, um, I would go ahead and say it was like day 15 because it was halfway through day 15. So um, that would be day 15. Now you might be looking to say, well, there's another day also that also has a 100. But the problem with that is that's a negative day. So that part of the graph doesn't actually refer to the book signing and the, and the number of books sold. So it basically starts at zero, at day zero. So you could kind of, if we could, we could erase this little part over here. So this answer would be, I don't know why this keeps coming up. This answer would be day 15. I don't know why it's not reading. Day 15. Then the next kind of question that we're going to look at is we're going to look at absolute value word problems. And um, sometimes people make these a whole lot harder than they need to be. So we're going to look at this absolute value word problems because when you're doing these questions, you could actually figure out the answers without writing an equation. But I do want you to write an equation for that, for this. So it says manufacturing. So this is a manufacturing problem. And so the ideal width of a certain conveyor belt for, for a manufacturing plant is 50 inches. An actual conveyor belt can vary from the ideal by at most 7 30 seconds of an inch. Find the acceptable widths for this conveyor belt. So basically, if you just sort of think about this question, they want it to be, they want the conveyor belt to be 50 inches. But 
have you ever heard of like the uh, margin of error? We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to statistics. But they want it to be 50 inches, but it can vary by 7 37, 30 seconds of an inch. Okay, so they can kind of give you a, a little leeway. So when you're doing this question, um, what happens is you've got your 50. I don't know why it's not writing again. And you could add 730 seconds to it. And you could also subtract 730 seconds to it in order to get your answer. So 